Well, here we go. Let's jump in, talk about what is integration services. You can see here the layout of the chapter. So right here, we're over on the left side, the overview of SSIS. This is just going to be a couple of different videos here. Once we get through these couple of videos, then it's, it's, we're really going to be into demo mode. So this last video, this video, the next video, they're kind of this lecture style. The predominance of this course is more of a demo style where you actually watch me do it, kind of a screencast approach. It's the same as being in the classroom with me, except you just can't see my pretty little face, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. How about you stop just for a second, and I want you to think, let's talk about some medium to large size companies. And I want you to picture a couple of medium large size companies that are great companies that you think of when you think of great products, great whatever, okay? So at some point they were a good company. What turns, what are some of the attributes slash factors that make a good company become a great company? You could pause the video, you could uh, not pause the video and wait for me, I don't care, your choice. Just think of a couple. I had a few here to kind of spark the discussion. Invariably, you're going to have thought of maybe some different ones than I did. But I thought these were maybe some common things. You have great leadership or great products or great processes. You might have all of these. You might have some of them. Um, happy employees, a particular commitment to um, green energy. You could have lots of different things that take, help take a company from good to great. Now, those are all reasons that a company can be go, also become a good company. But to become a great company, it may require some of those things. But there's also at least one common denominator among all great companies. And that is the ability to make informed decisions quickly and with consensus. Now, you might say, well, you know, so-and-so company is a great company, but they don't have great leadership because they had such a great product and they were the first one out there. They had a competitive advantage. They were the first to market. Okay, you don't become a great company without the ability to make informed decisions quickly and with consensus. Now, I choose this word decisions here. Now, that, that could actually be a, a whole bunch of things. could relate to policy. Uh, particularly important would be forecasting. You, know, you can't raise more money. You can't loan or lend, get more money from the bank uh, without uh, sales forecasting. You don't know where to put your money without good marketing forecasting, uh, good segmentation, demographics. Those are all things that I'm talking about when I say decisions. Now, to make an informed decision quickly means you got to have access to the raw data, okay? whether it be the demographic information, where your customers are coming from, where on the planet your products are at any given moment. Gathering consensus means that that data has to be in a format that all of the stakeholders can understand. Now, I'm generally not talking about just in a cellular, uh, tabular-based format. You know, your CEOs, CTOs, they don't probably want to write select statements. We're not going to ask John down in HR to go up and write a very complicated 12-table join in SQL Server. So, oops, the problem that we face is that organizations generally have data in a lot of different formats relational databases, spreadsheets, desktop databases, text files. You know what a CSV file, that's probably the only one that I think some people might not be familiar with here, the CSV, the comma separated values, generally just a .csv file. And the .dat is not necessarily a file type, uh, but a, a lot of times you see applications export text data and they put a, dot D, a DAT extension on it. Now, so every organization has to deal with this struggle of working with all these different data types, all these different formats, proprietary, some are open, is some are distributed, one's on this server, one's on another, some's in Los Angeles, some is in London. 
I, I just threw a quick example here off the top of my head. You have a, no, a company that does their invoicing maybe in QuickBooks or Excel. Then once they get the order, it's entered into a, a CRM, a customer relationship management system built in Oracle. Uh, then the customers, when they actually log in and want to view their orders, that's done on a SQL Server 2000 based website, maybe an ASP or an ASP.NET uh, solution. And then you have a ticket tracking system that maybe runs on MySQL with PHP. Okay, so there's a, this is just one of many examples. As you're watching this, you're probably thinking of your own scenarios that you have to deal with on a daily basis. The point is everybody has to deal with this disparate systems. You've got lots of different data sources, and they're all kind of related, or a lot of them are kind of related. Okay, So one of the techniques, one of the tools that we have is that of creating a data warehouse. Now this course is not a data warehousing course, but I'm going to use the term data warehouse in the next couple of videos and throughout the course in certain situations because SSIS and data warehouses just fit so perfectly together. So a data warehouse is often that place where you bring everything together. You know, to have quality data to have quality reports, to be able to make informed decisions quickly and get consensus, you've got to have a single way to access the data. So we're going to be able to, with this data warehouse, or a data warehouse, collect and we'll have a schedule that runs to maybe collect all this data from all these different sources and store it in a central repository, right? So we got to load the data warehouse. Very common term. We've got to load the data warehouse here. Okay, So we're connecting up to all these different service uh, data sources. And in some cases, we might be only getting the changes since the last time we loaded this data warehouse. Like if we're loading this once a week on Sunday morning, we don't, and, and let's say that we have to deal with a 250 gigabyte database, we don't want to load the entire 250 gigabytes every week. We only want to load the changes since last week. That's what an incremental update is. You heard me use that in that last video, the intro video. Okay, the incremental changes. A delta, you might also uh, hear me use that term delta, right? Just the changes since the last time we did that particular load. Right? Now we also are very often going to have to deal with data quality issues. We want to make sure that we're consistent Okay, so we have data scrubbing. We have consistency, consistency checks that we go through. Like it's very common that in one database system you use, uh, like I just happen to use this USA U period S period S period uh, A period thing here. In Oracle, you store a country in one format because that's what the application did. Okay. But now the SQL Server database uses a different format because those are different developers and they chose U period, S period, A period. So when it gets to the data warehouse, you don't want to have to write your queries to deal with all these different varieties of USA. So you want consistency. You want it all to be United States. You have to transform that data as it is extracted from Oracle you transform it from USA into United States when you load it into the data warehouse. You extract it from SQL Server and you extract only the U period, S period, A period parts and then you transform it into United States when you load it into that data warehouse. So the data quality issue we're going to have to cover quite extensively in this course. The more data sources you have, the more different groups of companies, of vendors, of developers, of consultants who wrote an application, wrote a database, designed a tool, they're all going to do it differently and we have to get it all consistent. Right? Garbage in, garbage out. Right? So SSIS, to bring it full circle back to talking about integration services, it's the perfect tool for this kind of work. Okay? It connects to lots of different types of data sources and it can copy and it can move the data. It can also do that extensive data quality procedures, data scrubbing, uh, consistency checks, uh, throw out the garbage, change the garbage, aggregate. It can do all kinds of things that we need to. 
particularly related to data quality. So, tell you what we're going to do. Let's talk a little bit more about it in the next video. One of the things, if this is your first uh, learning, uh, learn at first course here, you'll learn or notice that I tend to chunk things into about a, anywhere between 7 to 15 minute videos. And I do this on purpose. Uh, the first and primary reason is that when I'm sitting around watching a video, that's about my... Um, what's the word um, I'm sure you it's uh, come to you my attention span sorry <laughs> okay Sp uh, spaced out there for a second so my attention span is about that I got my telephone I got a phone call coming in an email I want to check the web etc so I try to break it into chunks for one reason for attention span but the second reason I do it is one of my problems that I always had with online video courses is that you had to watch them in particular order and I don't read technical books necessarily in the order they're given to me. I want to be able to jump around, find the one thing that I need, read 15 minutes, 30 minutes, get what I want, put it down and get to work, be productive. And I couldn't have done that if this course was an hour and a half or an hour and a half chunks. So by putting them into little 10 minute chunks, let's say, it makes it to where you can come back to this and quickly just get the one or two things that you need. So. I know it's probably going to be a little disjointed in certain places throughout the course when I say, okay, next video, let's stop right here. But the focus is on making it reusable for you down the line so that a year from now, six months from now, you can come back to this and still take advantage of it without having to watch the whole course. So I hope you dig it. I'll see you in the next video.